commemorative Air Force is uh, around to fly World War II aircraft and to educate the folks of today of what happened and how the people had to operate these airplanes and what they did for us to have our freedom today. This aircraft uh, takes it, take, brings it home to uh, the vets that are still alive. Um, that they're, they're all dying off. They're 94, 95 years old, and with with them goes the history of this past. And this aircraft was around when uh, they were and fighting in World War II, and so it educates folks that have no idea what the people went through back in World War II to to give us our freedom that we have today. Uh, everything today is pre-programmed, basically. You know, when you're flying, you can fly a big jet with two fingers and nice and easy and trim it exactly. This is two hands. You're driving this airplane left and right, up and down, all cables and pulleys, moving flight controls. Nothing's in between the two of us. When you get done flying it, you're sweating. You're, it was like a workout. During the war, they had a crew of 10. The pilot and the co-pilot were the only two that didn't have guns. Everybody else had a gun. So when they were in combat, everybody was shooting one of these 50 calibers off us, which are 13 of them. They looked at it when it came out of the factory and they go, oh, we've never seen an aircraft have so much defense. This is a flying fortress. You gotta remember that these guys were 20 years old, 21 years old. If you were 21, 22, you were the old guy. And they called you grandpa. They went off and went up to 25, 30,000 feet in this aircraft with no pressurization, no oxygen, had to wear masks when they got above 10, had to plug in when they got above 12 or 11 for their flight suits, which a lot of time, because they were working on the ground like we are, be hot and sweaty. And then when they would plug them in, because they're so wet, they would short out. So the, the, the heat wouldn't work. There's actual plugs, just like outlets in your house in here for the plug in your suits. It's loud and it's windy and, it, and it's a lot of noise. You're not gonna be able to talk to anybody unless you're on a headset. And you gotta sit back and think about these guys headed out of England, headed to Germany, or coming up from Africa and headed up to, to Germany. And, you know, hundreds of these together. You know, 100 plane range and flying in tight formation and flat coming up from above, watching the, the flashes come to the ground. And somebody told me the other day, I don't know, 28 seconds later, they're going to be exploded next to your airplane. So you had 26 seconds. You had to constantly move the airplane. Everybody can't believe it. People who do this are aviation buffs. This is like the bucket list of going flying on an airplane. I would never met anybody that was not happy. There's never been an unhappy rider. Everybody gets off this airplane. They want a poster, they want our signatures. They, they all can't believe that they got to do this because it's so rare. I do this because I meet guys like Jim. He rolled up on this airplane uh, in, his, uh, in his wheelchair with his family. We sat and listened to his stories for almost two hours and he sat and talked to us and he was n couldn't have been happier that we were there bringing his aircraft back to see, see him. He kept on saying, I just wanted to see it one more last time. And you know, they become so happy and I do this to honor those vets from World War II and to bring the, the history and the knowledge that they sh have and they're sharing it with others. Uh, it's just amazing. These are my days off from work and I volunteer to do this and everybody here is a volunteer. And uh, the money all goes back that we sell for rides and t-shirts and hats all go back into the airplane to keep it going every year. This interview involves commercial content. The products and services featured appear as paid advertising.